welcome to the final topic of this semester that is output devices so far we have discussed about the various algorithms and techniques that are used to represent and render graphical elements in a digital device those were all software and implementational concepts now we discuss some of the hardware concepts that are used here namely the display devices and printers for display devices we will talk about crt lcd and led displays and for printers we will talk about uh, dot matrix inkjet and laser printers okay, so uh, first we start with crt displays which is a very old and uh, currently obsolete display uh, crt stands for cathode ray tube it is a type of vacuum tube which displays images when the electron beam from the electron guns strike the phosphorescent surface inside the device it is a very old technology and has been superseded by flat panel displays like lcd led and plasma displays since the late 2000s but we still discuss it due to the historical reasons and because of the fact that its design gave some idea for newer displays well the basic construction of the crt device can be seen from this particular slide the cathode focusing anode and accelerating anode uh, this is the cathode the focusing and uh, accelerating anodes <coughs> together make up the electron gun portion of the cathode ray tube uh, this whole thing is the electron gun portion the ray here is basically the stream of electrons that gets uh, thrown from the cathode when it is heated due to passage of electricity then the focusing anode uh, and accelerating anode focuses the electron clusters into a beam into a single un uh, beam a single line beam uh, the ver vertical deflection plate this is the vertical deflection plate and then the horizontal de uh, deflection plate comes into uh, effect here the vertical deflection plate causes the electron beam to deviate either upwards or downwards while the horizontal deflection plate makes it deviate uh, left or right and thus the beam can be targeted to any point on the screen that is think of this uh, vertical plate as when the electron beam goes in this way the vertical uh, plates will be above its head and below its feet uh, if it were a human being then this plate would be above above its head and below its feet and these two plates are not above and below this this is on the front and this is on the uh, back so think of it if the human being was uh, running in this direction then this will be on the right of his right hand and that would be on the left of his left hand and together they would make the electron beam get pointed to one particular direction on the screen uh, the front of the crt uh, this particular part is called the face plate the internal surface of the face plate is coated with phosphor which glows when it is struck by the beam uh, this procedure can actually be similarly uh, applied for a color crt display here three electron beams are deflected uh, and focused as a group onto the shadow mask uh, which contains a sequence of holes aligned with the phosphor dot uh, dot patterns the three beams activate a dotted triangle uh, which occurs as a small uh, color spot on the screen that is each pixel on the screen will be defined using three different uh, phosphor dots and these three different phosphor dots uh, are basically responsible for creating three different colors red blue and green and the combined effect of them creates the effect for one pixel okay so next we move on to random scan displays in case of random scan displays the uh, this is just one of the types of uh, crt displays uh, in these kinds of displays, the image is generated out of a sequence of straight line or curved segments. After drawing the entire image, the system cycles back to the starting line or curve and redraws the whole image again. Uh, just like it, uh, it is shown in here, it will start at a particular point, then it will draw and it will finish. When it finishes drawing, it will again start from that uh, starting point and then redraw the whole image again. And this occurs 30 or 60 times in a second, depending on the refresh rate. And this is how this particular uh, thing uh, retains in our vision because when it is drawn and the uh, effect of it expires after a very small mic uh, microsecond and so it must be redrawn in uh, repeatedly within a very short time to keep this thing in our vision okay and there is another kind of displays that are uh, ra called raster scan in raster scan displays the pixels are arranged in the form of a rectangular box called a raster 
the information about the on and off pixels are stored in a refresh buffer or frame buffer. There are two beam refreshing in such displays, two beam refreshing techniques. Uh, one is the horizontal refresh, uh, horizontal retrace and the other is vertical retrace. And both of them are applied in a single uh, raster scan cycle. The beam starts drawing from the top left uh, and or it can be in any particular uh, convention but most common convention is starting from top left and going uh, horizontally and then ending at the bottom right. So it will start from the top left and when the beam draws a, rows of, uh, a row of pixels then it performs a horizontal retrace and starts from the and moves to the leftmost pixel of the next row. This is known as a horizontal re uh, retrace. Uh, after drawing a single row it will move to the leftmost uh, pixel of the next row. This is called the horizontal retrace. And when the beam reaches the, uh, uh, after keep, uh, repeating this a bunch of times, when it reaches the bottom right pixel, then it performs a vertical retrace and moves back to the top left pixel again and starts drawing a new frame. And this is repeated uh, 30 or 60 times in a second, uh, depending on the refresh rate. So this part, uh, uh, when it reaches up at the end of the frame and then starts drawing a new frame uh, and, uh, by moving back to the st uh, leftmost top left portion of the frame again, this is this particular motion is known as the uh, vertical retrace. And both the horizontal retrace and vertical retrace are performed for draw uh, after, uh, after drawing each uh, uh, frame. The horizontal re retrace is performed multiple times for each row. The vertical retrace is done once after the whole frame is drawn. Okay, so next we move on to liquid crystal display. Uh, LCD, uh, which is also known as LCD, uh, just the abbreviation of it. And we have already seen these displays uh, since it has already superseded the CRT uh, displays for a few, uh, quite a few years back. LCD displays use the light modulating properties of liquid crystals combined with polarizers to determine how much amount of light will pass through it. Its basic working pin, uh, principle is shown in this particular slide. The backlight here emits light towards the polarizer and color filters. Uh, in case of LCDs, a cold cathode fluorescent lamp, uh, CCF, that is uh, very popularly known as CCFL, uh, is used as a backlight. The backlight here is a single lamp, CCFL lamp. And the polarizers, uh, horizontal and vertical polarizers, allow light of certain orientation to pass through them. And the liquid crystal in between them can change the orientation of the light uh, that passes through it. So the combined effect of these three, the polarizer and the liquid crystal, uh, allows us to determine how much light will pass at a particular location of the screen. And there are three color filters in front of every pixel. The color filters convert the white light from the uh, coming from the uh, backlight into a particular color, uh, particular colored light by letting a particular wavelength pass through the filter. And the three color filters together produce color for each of the pixels. Okay, next we move on to LED displays, whose main component here is are the light emitting diodes. LED displays are a special kind of LCD displays where instead of having CCFL as the black, uh, backlight, we use LEDs as backlight. So the panel uh, that is used for LED displays are the same as LCD displays. Both use the same kind of flat panel. Uh, both are same kind of flat panel displays. The main difference here are the backlight and some implementational details. Well, there are two types of backlighting used, uh, that are used here. One is full array and another is edge lighting. In full array backlighting, the LEDs are distributed uh, evenly behind the entire screen. And either it can be, uh, okay, uh, this, is the, this is actually the best form of backlighting as it allows uh, uniform lighting, uh, brighter colors, and greater contrast. There is another, the other kind of backlighting that, that is commonly used is edge lighting. In edge lighting, the LEDs are placed along the edges of the screen either all around the screen or on two sides like this. It can be all around at the peri periphery or it can be only on two sides or just at the bottom. And the bottom ones will light up the whole screen. Uh, this type of backlighting allows the display to be thinner, but the downsides are that the black levels are not as deep and lighting is not uniform. So if you look closely, the edges will appear brighter 
than the middle area of the screen since the actual light sources are along the edges. Uh, also the black, uh, as we have said, the black levels will not look as deep. That means uh, wherever it is supposed to be completely black, it will not be exactly black and there will be some uh, color differences from the actual image. Okay, uh, the working mechanism of such LED displays can be seen from uh, this particular figure. It is basically the same for LCD, only in this case the backlighting is not a single CCFL lamp. This is an array of LEDs uh, and here the electrodes control uh, the polarizer which determines how much of the light from the LEDs uh, will be allowed to pass and depending on this uh, control it determines where on the screen there will be more light and where there will be less light. Okay, uh, next we move on to printers. A printer is a device that accepts text and graphic data from a digital device and transfers them onto paper or hard copy. Based on the printing mechanism, there are two types, uh, impact printers and non-impact printers. Dot matrix printer is an example of impact printers, whereas inkjet and laser printers are examples of non-impact printers. Uh, there is also uh, another category actually uh, of printers called 3D printers which instead of transferring uh, graphical data onto paper performs the function of using the data to generate physical objects using materials like plastic, polymers, metal alloys or even food ingredients or, uh, or any kind of organic ingredient. Yeah. The first type of printers that we will talk about are the dot matrix printers. This type of printer produces uh, produce image on the paper by striking pins against an inked ribbon. Uh, the ink is transferred onto the paper in the form of closely shaped dots that form each character. The more pins there are, the better the printing quality will be. Uh, commonly 24 pin dot matrix printers were in use, which could print almost all characters clearly, or at least to the most accurate uh, version. Uh, the basic working mechanism of such printers can be actually seen from here. The paper would get rolled by the drum, uh, actually it will, the paper will be visible from the outside and all the all these parts will be actually inside the printer and when the paper gets rolled by the drum into the contraption uh, there is a mechanism here where a particular uh, there is a colored ribbon uh, an inked ribbon is uh, placed here a pin gets uh, hits the ribbon and puts the characters onto the paper on that on those particular positions and this pin whether it will hit or not is determined by uh, a particular contraption which uh, either pushes or pulls this particular uh, handle and this will determine whether the pin will will be hitting that ribbon or not. Okay. Uh, next we move on to inkjet printers. Uh, these are actually a type of non-impact printers different which are uh, highly different from dot matrix printers. Uh, instead of pins it uses hundreds of tiny guns that fire dots of ink onto the paper. Uh, it uses the CMYK color scheme, which is a subtractive color, color model. Uh, and we know what, uh, what kind of color model this is from our previous discussion on colors. Uh, there are two types of drop generating uh, mechanisms in, the, in case of uh, inkjet printers. This can be seen from this particular fig uh, these two figures. Both are, uh, well, both of these uh, systems are basically airtight at the beginning, airtight and stable. In case of thermal inkjet, electricity is passed through the uh, thin film resistor to heat it enough to boil the ink. Uh, basically, notice this portion where there is a uh, conductor and there is a thin film resistor in the middle of the conductor. Electricity will be conducted by the conductor and passed through this uh, thin film resistor, and this will make uh, this will heat it up and cause the uh, ink here. To heat up as well and this heat will be enough to boil the ink to the point that it creates a small vapor bubble closest to the uh, resistor and this will cause an expansion inside the airtight system which in turn exerts pressure inside the liquid and pushes ink through this uh, nozzle towards the paper and the other kind of uh, drop generation mechanism that, that is used for uh, inkjet printers is known as the piezoelectric inkjet and it uses piezoelectric materials 
which are a type of crystalline materials uh, that have the property of deforming when high electric fields are applied across them. This deformation uh, uh, squeezes the channel. Uh, that is, at first it will remain straight, so there is no other extra pressure coming in here. When it when electricity is passed through it, it will bend and it will squeeze this channel and thus create uh, it will create a, a pressure pulse inside the uh, liquid and this will eject ink through the nozzle. The purpose of this elastic diaphragm here is to separate the ink from the uh, piezoelectric material. Okay, so next we move on to laser printers. This is also another type of uh, non-impact printer. It provides the best quality printing compared to the other types but is more ex uh, expensive to maintain. Uh, the basic principle of such printers can actually be seen from this figure. It works by repeatedly passing a laser beam back and forth over a uh, negatively charged cylinder called a drum uh, to define a dif uh, differentially charged image. This is basically similar to drawing the shadow of the image onto the drum by changing the charge of those particular positions on the drum. So basically this drum will contain, will, uh, at the beginning it will contain fully, ne uh, it will be uh, charged negatively and this laser unit by drawing onto the drum will determine which part of the image, uh, which part of the drum will have different charges and basically that will determine uh, which of the colored, uh, which of the charged uh, ink will get stapled onto the drum. So the, uh, dr the drum will actually roll and will collect electrically charged ink called toner uh, and transfer them onto the paper. Uh, the paper is then actually heated by the fuser to permanently fuse the toner onto the paper. Then as the paper gradually rolls towards the paper exit, uh, it gets cooled down a little and we uh, the finally, finally the output is obtained uh, on the outside where we see that the paper is still a bit warm. Okay, so that will be the end of this lecture. Uh, thank you for your attention. And any, uh, if you have any kind of questions or queries, you can ask it during the uh, question and answer session that we will have uh, during our online meeting. Thank you.